The T2 Tile project is building an indefinitely scalable computational stack. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. Our top stories this week. Uh, the zone frame production advances. Actually, it's done. Uh, uh, so this is, uh, we're finishing up another roll of, of PETG uh, that we made them out of. Uh, we managed to make the uh, uh, managed to make the uh, switch uh, successfully by uh, by not doing it automatically, by, by doing it manually. This is, I believe, the actual last frame coming off this thing. We now have one box that has seven uh, power zone frames in it. Uh, another box with five 12 power zones uh, uh, frames is enough to do 192 tiles, which I'm sure is more than we're going to ever build. If we build 10 or 11 power zones, I will be happy, and then we'll have extras to deal with breaking and so on and so forth. So that's pretty much it for the power zone. The only uh, the only other materials that we've got are, are these pipe interface things, these hooks for hanging on it with the vision of hanging it on a, a one-inch uh, pipe uh, that is mounted to the ceiling or on a frame or something like that. Uh, those the, the, those pipe interfaces are not technically part of the T2 tile grid itself. They're just sort of an interface thing for a particular finite demo, but we still need them. We've been working on them for a while. This was a version from a while back that also has the this uh, this is the tab that actually connects into the uh, existing framework for the actual t2 tile grid that's the the t the the hook to go around the pipe here's an instance of it we can see that the the things are sort of bending in the back and this has been an ongoing issue that we've been strengthening it up and trying a bunch of variety of options and so forth so one of the options was to move the hanging point a little bit further forward so that it wouldn't tip as much uh, and here's an example where we made a rack of those. It, it worked pretty well, but then because the actual center of gravity is uh, further in the center, that meant that they actually tipped back a little bit. The original ones that had more of the flexing hung a little bit straighter, so I was still trying to figure out a way to split the difference, and I did a few more designs on that this past week. So here was one of the versions that I did, uh, <coughs> where the point is to actually, uh, this, it's not so easy to see, but this thing where the, the, the tab interface to the existing frame goes in is now tipped at a significantly st steeper angle, again, to make the, uh, uh, the hook sort of curl around it while having the center of gravity sort of somewhere in between having it all the way at the back and having it kind of in the center of the pipe. Uh, uh, this was an improved version of it where I, instead of having that sort of bubble on it, I rounded off the things so that there was a little bit more plastic around the frame uh, interface that, uh, capturing zone there because I wanted it to be, you know, reasonably strong. Uh, uh, printed up a bunch of them. Uh, oh, and also got this part at the bottom here that wasn't there that I realized that this thing could come down further and give it actually more support. So now there's three levels of support, the, the pipe hook, the reinforced interface, and then the strip itself. Uh, and they came out. And, and I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to do this, but let's see if I can do it. So here, uh, uh, these things, some of these things come off easier than others. So this is uh, a power zone uh, um, with these new frame uh, power pipe hooks on them. Let's see if I can get my demonstration pipe here. So I managed to get them set so that there is a little bit of a snap like that to get them in there uh, so that they won't just pop off completely easily, but they still do come off without a whole lot of trouble there if you want to. So I think those are going to work fairly well. They're still pretty high. They're nice and short, so there isn't a whole lot of drop uh, in here. I think it'll probably be all right. So I'm going to try to make enough of those to do three columns, one, two, three, of uh, power zones for, again, like a three-by-three tic-tac-toe three grid of power zones being the target deployment. I don't have enough of the urban gray PETG to do this. I'm thinking uh, I may do one group in this red that I got and one that I blue that I got so that it'll sort of be, you'll be able to talk about the red column and the blue column and the gray column, uh, uh, even though that's kind of cheating and it's sort of a, a coarse 
absolute addressing scheme, which of course T2 doesn't have, but then that's not the, this course addressing scheme is not part of the T2. It's in the, it's in the surrounding frame, which is just the specific demo. The architecture is indefinitely scalable. So that's actual, not just progress, but kind of completion almost of really pretty much all of the hardware all of the mechanical hardware there's going to be a little bit more with just deploying how to get the wall warts attached and and staging powering up and stuff like that but won't be able to deal with that until we have multiple power zones that we need to power up all right so that's that uh uh okay and nano remo the national novel writing month I talked about it last week. Uh, lots of people gave me really good support. Thank you, folks. Uh, uh, Michael, seven gender chief. Uh, um, you know, we'll read that novel and, and starchy pancakes and, and all, all of you folks that have been uh, supporting the T2 Tile project all along. Pretty much everybody was kind of pro going for it. You know, all right, uh, Andrew. Uh, a new voice, uh, Anders Edstrom. Uh, uh, thank you for for chiming in. Uh, mentioned talking about the novel being about scalable hardware, and and it is. I mean, the novel is going to end up being about whatever it's going to end up being about. But uh, the science fiction part of it for me uh, is that it is set in the future of the path to best effort, the paper which is online now. Uh, um, and it's trying to show what it's like when this uh, stuff is, is, is really all over the place in there. And we'll see how much we can get into it. I mean, what uh, uh, Luke Wilson contemplation actually did Nano <laughs> nine years ago. Uh, it's just amazing everything that us monkeys are doing on this planet all the time. You, you know, you just don't even, can't even think about it or your head would explode. Uh, uh, and then you find out all these little things, you know, people have been going crazy. David Kiersey sent a, a nice note about uh, Bob Forward, or one of my favorite science fiction authors back when I was reading tons of science fiction, like uh, Dragon's Egg, was a, uh, I, I liked a lot the book. It's about live, uh, creatures living on the surface of a neutron star. Uh, um, so, so, so I went for it. So last week I was prepping, uh, uh, best effort. That's the title of the working title. Anyway, this week I am not prepping anymore. I am in progress. Last week, there were all of these badges of which I had none this week. I now have one, two, three. I have four badges. I mean, two and the two and the three are sort of participation trophies. The 1667 is the number of words you're supposed to do every day. <laughs> Oh, 5k i got to 5k uh, uh i'm already behind the the dotted blue line is what i need to do if i'm going to make 50k by the end of the month i've already started to fall off the pace this is grueling i mean it is interesting it's an interesting experience to try to just come up with this much text i am nowhere configured to do this uh, um and you know it, and well also their statistics kind of it seems like they sort of interact badly with the the time zone that i'm in or something like that because it's constantly dunning me for being in terrible things and not having done anything but me being deadline driven like i am uh, i don't I'll upload my new word count for the day until the end of the day like around midnight mountain time something like that uh, uh and they're helping me out. I'm writing a thousand words a day on average so far, first four days, uh, uh, five days, and that's not enough. I need to do 16 plus. At this rate, I'll be done on December 16th. Yesterday, they were telling me I'd be done on December 8th. You get the idea. Uh, um, of course, I took the time to build my own instrumentation to do this. So this is the data that I'm getting, the slightly more fine-grained data that's appending a word count to a log file every time I build the PDF. Uh, um, and, you know, so you see two kinds of things when I'm actually working. When I'm actually working, I build the thing a lot because I really, I, for me, I need to stare at the actual PDF. It, these times when I've been... This process, NanoRemo, that's making me try to write so fast, I'm spending more time just looking at the Emacs buffers. But then whenever I get to a pause, I want to rebuild it. This actually also backs it up as well as uh, putting a, a record in the word count file. So all those dense areas here uh, are when I'm actually working on it. These jumps here, though, what are they? This is a new weird thing. <laughs> um, 
I started reading on the Nano Remo forums about you know dictation, about dictating novels, and I always sort of wondered about dictation. And you know, I I would like record stuff, just audio recordings when I was doing brainstorming and stuff like that all along. But then that meant that I had to transcribe it later, and I never dared to actually think about going out and, and trying to hire someone to transcribe it because it was typically you know mumbling and half gibberish and so forth. And even I had to struggle to figure out what it was that I may have said. Uh, when I was trying to transcribe it. But they were saying, you know, in addition to all these co software that you can buy, you can do this stuff with Google now. And I, I actually tried it. So, you know, you go to Google Docs and there's a, a, a tool, voice typing, and you click and the thing just starts going. And I tried it and it's really pretty accurate. It's kind of amazing. I mean, once you get used to doing the spoken punctuation idea of dictation, comma, the result starts to really look like prose, period, new paragraph. Of course, comma, the hard part of it is, comma, you have to accept the fact that all your voice and your bits and your precious words, comma, are going up to Google to feed the unending hunger of their machine learning tensor processing units and so forth, period. And I'm not sure how I feel about that in general, period. But for the purposes of generating text rapidly, comma, particularly when I am trying to do sort of a new scene, a, a new area of the story, rather than something that's more in line with what's come before, comma, this voice typing thing is great because I don't know how to rub out the last word, exclamation point. So what I would always do when I'm typing by hand, comma, is constantly being rewriting what I just did, comma. I don't know how to do that with this voice typing, so I just restate the whole sentence or just move on to the next sentence knowing that it's text to be edited later anyway. New paragraph. Pretty incredible. I mean, wow. So I have used this now, comma, for a couple of these sections where you see the big jump. And then I just take it from here and I cut and paste it into my Emacs buffer and then I edit it from there, period. Emacs buffer. <laughs> anyway. So. NaNoWriMo, you know, I thought once a week for the T Tuesday updates was hard. You know, Nano Remo, thousand words plus every day. It's changing my brain. I really don't know if I'm going to get to 50,000. I'll be surprised if I get to 50,000, number one. And number two, I can say with some confidence that if I do get to 50,000, there'll be more oh, 20,000 words of real garbage. <laughs> in there. I mean, even in the whatever 5,000 and change that I have now, there's some stuff which is almost raw dictation uh, that I haven't yet gone back and integrated. And at the same time, I have so many more whole scenes I have to do that it's like, well, who cares? You know, move on. So we'll see. I'll stop there. I need to get some sleep and then I need to go and do some more writing. I'll probably be here again next week. Thanks, everybody, for all the support. Thanks for coming to check it out. We'll talk again.